I love what we're doing, uh, and I want to go back. I would go back on the next flight uh, to mark up bills on gun violence prevention and on election security. So we took uh, the month of August, or are taking the month of August in our districts, and it's been an incredible month for me to get to learn from so many of you, uh, and I go back after Labor Day, uh, and I want to thank everybody in the room that's here. Uh, you are the reason uh, that we work as hard as we do, that we uh, fight for the values that we share, and we're 100% uh, committed to making sure that the federal government gets its act together particularly on something like gun violence prevention. And we have to stop this incendiary rhetoric that is leading to these sorts of incidents in its tracks from wherever it comes. Uh, I went on record earlier today saying that President Trump's recent comments about disloyal Jewish Americans are clearly anti-Semitic and offensive. I think that back to my own grandfather, who served in World War II, and then after returning from service, could not use our family name in his business. If he saw the type of comments that are being made today, he would find them deeply offensive, particularly coming from the Oval Office. So I don't care where the offensive comments are coming from, we have to stop people in their tracks and prevent this from getting out of hand. So I need everybody in this room to fight hate uh, with hope and with unity and with love. Can we do that? Yeah. I'd like to shift gears entirely, and I'd like to talk about our coast, if I may. So we had another tragedy recently in Encinitas where three people lost their lives, uh, and I want to do everything I can to prevent the next tragedy. You may not know this, but three days prior to that tragedy, I actually wrote a letter to the Army Corps of Engineers asking them for long overdue funding uh, for the Encinitas and Solana Beach Bluff Project. Three days later, you had tragedy. And what I've learned is that folks at the Army Corps of Engineers and the Office of Management and Budget thought that what we were asking for was sand for tourism or recreation. And I had a pretty uh, firm conversation with the, the head of the Army Corps of Engineers after the tragedy in Encinitas, and I told him, look, this is not about tourism or recreation. This is about basic safety. So I just wrote a letter, another letter, with Senators uh, Harris and Feinstein, and I'm grateful to them for their help, because it's going to take them as well, to get the Army Corps of Engineers to finally fund the project, as well as the Office of Management and Budget to free up the funding. So I'm very hopeful. And again, sometimes it takes tragedy, but in the wake of tragedy, we've got to make sure that we do this, and when we do it, we've got to make sure that people know we're doing it for safety, not for tourism. Fair enough? So I want to spend a minute and talk about some of the environmental legislation that we're working on. I am proud to have co-sponsored two bills to prevent offshore drilling on the California coast. Secretary of the Interior, David Bernhardt, in my district office, and we had a meeting, and I said to him, Secretary, an overwhelming majority of people in my district, for that matter, people up and down the state of California, do not want offshore drilling. That includes an overwhelming number of Republicans, independents, Democrats. It's not a party line thing. It's simply that we do not want to see drill rigs off our beautiful California coastline. Will you commit to me, Secretary Bernhardt, that you will respect the will of Californians and not drill off our coast? And he said, I promise you that I will follow the law. Which tells me we're in for a fight. And I'm grateful to Governor Newsom and to Attorney General Becerra and to Senators Harris and Feinstein and to everybody in this room, because we're all in this together. If we want to stop drilling off our coast, we've got to rise up against it. Nobody in here wants drilling off the coast, do you? No. no. Me neither. So we've got to stand up collectively and prevent it from happening. Also, we've been able to do a fair amount on renewable energy, even in a bipartisan manner. 
I introduced something called the Public Lands Renewable Energy Development Act, or PLORIDA for short, and I got a Republican, Paul Gosar of Arizona, to co-sponsor it. There are now 15 Republicans and 14 Democrats, last I checked, that are sponsoring that bill. 25 gigawatts of new renewable energy projects on our public lands by 2025. It is evidence that we actually can work together and get something done. And speaking of getting something done, I want to thank those in the room who have sponsored, from the, from the Citizens Climate, Lo Climate Lobby, and I see Eve Simmons back there, has sponsored H.R. 763, the Carbon Fee and Dividend Act. Thank you for your leadership. It is past time that we put a price on carbon and that we reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Right. The President is wrong about the auto manufacturers. He thinks that they want to build dirtier cars. It's just flat wrong. They want to build clean cars for the global market. And they're doing that all over the world. And the question is whether America will lead or America will follow. Because what will happen in the next 20 to 30 years will revolutionize the way that we move people and goods. And the question will be whether or not the United States leads or whether or not we're driving clean cars that are built elsewhere in Europe or Asia or whether or not we're building cars right here and leading in clean energy manufacturing just the way we've led in every other industrial revolution over the last 240 years. We right now, unfortunately, because we have advocated our responsibility under the Paris Climate Accord, because we deny climate science, because we've fired the people at the various agencies responsible for climate change, we are blown. And so I need your help and ultimately I think there's a brighter day ahead, but we've got to stop digging the hole. That's why it's so important that we hold to account the EPA under this president. When you have the secretary of the EPA, who uh, after decades of bipartisan progress on banning toxic pesticides or getting the mercury out of the air uh, or lead out of our water, we're taking a step back. Everybody knows that. It's really important as we may think. We had Transnet. Everybody knows about Transnet, and then they re-upped it. And unfortunately, a lot of the money's already been spent. So what do we do with the money that's already uh, there, that we actually do have? I want to make sure that as much of it as possible comes to North County. And what I mean by that is let's get everything shovel ready so that if we move forward with the five big moves, with the uh, connected corridors, with the transit hubs, you'd have one in Solana Beach, uh, where the, the train station is now. By the way, our new campaign office, right by the Solana Beach train station, right on Rios, hopefully will be open very soon. Uh, but the idea is you have these transit hubs, and then you have everything from ride sharing to um, you know, being able to get a, get a bike, get a scooter, you name it. So what it all is going to take is money, and I will leave it to Sandak to work with the mayors. And here's where we'll come in, is whatever the plan is that is locally derived, that's where the federal government will come in and match as much of the money as we can. Billions and billions and billions of dollars in federal funds, and I will work and fight and claw for every single one of those dollars so that we can be proud of our entire transportation network in North County. In my district, the average commute is 27 minutes each way. It's 54 minutes a day, an hour a day, that people in our district are away from their families. And I want to do everything we can to reduce that number. And that's going to require, I believe, big, bold moves. So I appreciate the variety of perspectives on this. I also understand the perspective of wanting to make sure that the things we've already agreed upon get funded, get paid for. So I get it. It's complex. We need you to stay involved. And I think uh, the folks at Sandag are doing a great job. We just got to keep moving forward for public transportation and for reducing our greenhouse gas footprint.